May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> One clown went and videoed himself being buried in a coffin. My favorite, God was calling us to clearly define our allegiances, clearly define our loyalties, clearly define the one to whom we have surrendered as Father. So what I tried to do yesterday was to show you that him is both the father of creation and then he's the father of sons. That you live on the earth does not automatically qualify you to bear the title of sonship. Even though God is the father of all and all can be called his offspring by reason of the fact that he gave everything life, not everyone upon the face of the earth can claim God as their father. And I said to you that this is because the word that is translated sons, when we speak about sons and sonship in the context of this spiritual relationship between God and man, we are not speaking about biological parentage. That sonship speaks about a status. Sonship speaks about a nature that you come into on account of the salvific. If people who walk around you, people who work around you, people who live around you cannot tell where your allegiance is, you are a fraud. If the people in your office are not sure whether you are a Christian or not, People in your neighborhood cannot tell for true that this sister, she's, she serves God. This brother, he is a Christian. He is not with us. If they cannot make that clear distinction, what you claim to have as Christianity is a lie. You are a fraud. And don't be angry with me. When I say these things, I say these things on the basis of the teachings of Jesus. Have you read in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus was the one teaching and he said in verse 13 and 14, Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. What Jesus was trying to tell you is that the world in which the Christian is called to live has a different nomenclature, different structure, different texture from what it is that you carry. So every time we see you, you should be anti the world. If you bring light into the presence of darkness, it will be clear that this is light. But Jesus was the one taking that teaching further. He advanced in Matthew chapter 6 and showed us that it is possible for you to claim that you have light and yet the light you are carrying is darkness. Jesus. Why? Because what causes your body to be full of light is what you feast your eyes upon. And this is not just about looking. This is about perception. Because if you are going to have understanding, if you are going to model your life after your convictions, your perceptions must be correct. So for instance, the way the average Christian perceives success is a problem. The way the average Christian, for instance, defines success in modern day is a big, big, big problem. I did a five-part teaching on, and I titled it Money Parables. I was trying to bring reorientation to the mind of the believer. You know, I grew up in church hearing that Jesus was rich. That Jesus is a rich man. And I'm not talking about Jesus in the riches of his glory. 
and in the abundance of resources that are available to him as God. I'm talking about the, the Jesus that was in his humanity. You know, some of you now are thinking in your mind that what is, this, is he saying now? Does he mean that Jesus... Jesus, when he walked upon the face of this earth, cannot have been considered to be rich. And this is not me bashing riches. Programs like this cost money. We are building now at Kasuba area. It costs money. My own project in Wari that we are building is at least minimum that we are going to spend before we even do furnishing is 750 million naira. So this is not me bashing money. But there's a reason Jesus lived the way he lived. Hmm? To show you that it is possible to be successful without the basic things that men in this world consider success. So your success by the life of Jesus is not defined by your bank account. Your success in this life is not defined by the kind of car that you drive. And this is why, dear sister, you will rarely find in this generation young people who are signing up their lives to be missionaries. You will rarely find. Let's just take a census now. You are in this room. You have a friend from the time you were on campus, maybe you are still in campus, to the time you got married. Now you have 62 children and you have a friend. You have a friend that told you that as we are leaving campus, I'm going to waste my life for Jesus. In this room, there is no one. In the days of our fathers, mission work was attractive. You know why? They had a proper perspective of the meaning of success. Some of us will not take up jobs like teaching, for instance, that does not pay so much. I don't know how, it, how much it pays in Ghana, but in Nigeria, it doesn't pay much. I'm a teacher. I'm a lecturer. We will not take up those jobs because we feel like we are failures if we cannot fill our bank accounts with enough money. Meanwhile, if you refuse to take up the teaching job, witches will take it. They will go and build a structure within the school. They will now be feeding your children witchcraft. So you will have an abomination, an anomaly, the father and the mother loves God but they, they don't understand why their children are acting like small demons in the house because they are making contact with a negative reality on a daily basis and everything you see happen in the natural is a consequence of the priesthood that won in the spiritual so if this priesthood that is winning in the spiritual is the priesthood that gives Satan license it will look like men are alive and they are useless because they are not able to dislodge the priesthood that is winning in the spirit. So we said yes, yesterday that if indeed you know who your father is, the proof of that understanding will be reflected in your daily living. The proof that you have come to the understanding that God is your father will be revealed in how you live on a daily basis. How do you treat your neighbors? How do you portray yourself to other people? How do you handle money? What are your positions concerning sex? Because we live in a generation where there is a desperation, a desperation to redefine our traditional definitions. So even things like marriage are under attack. Marriage is no longer considered in certain circles as the relationship between or the union between a man and a woman. So somebody can wake up and say, I'm in love with my cat. 
and marry the cat. I don't know how true the video was, but I saw a woman who was being interviewed. I could only conclude that it is comedy. Because there's nothing people won't do for content now. You know that money that YouTube pays is like cocaine. People, once they taste that money, they are willing to die for it. It's addictive. So people do all kinds of content. One clown went and videoed himself being buried in a coffin. In fact, the social media platform could not stand it. They banned his account. Eating his hunger, hunger, to do anything for money. So I saw a video where a woman said she's getting married to her duvet. And the man was asked, interviewing her and said, nobody saw that video? Okay, you saw it, right? So, so that it doesn't look as if this preacher from Nigeria. <laughs> that she's getting married to her duvet. The man was interviewing her. So when did you fall in love with your duvet? I said, see mad people. <laughs> people that we should catch and put chains on their hands and their legs and put them in an asylum somewhere until... They become normal and some people you know their madness is on account of hunger if you bring military men to flog them they'll be normal so there is a desperation to redefine our basic definitions so things like sexual purity are under attack things like marriage are under attack Things like parenting are under attack. Things like who a Christian is are under attack. So in a world where definitions are becoming blood, lines between good and evil are becoming smeared, we no longer know the difference. It becomes important that if you have made contact with Jesus, it must be obvious to the world who your father is. So even our perspective about money, our perspective about marriage, there are many young ladies sitting here now who will think that they are failures if they don't marry before they die. And this is not me bashing marriage. This is me telling you that it got to a point in my life that I stayed with the Lord. And I said, oh God, even if you don't want me to marry, I'm ready to waste my life. I'm ready to waste my life. I'm married. Your pastor is married. So it's not as if I'm trying to say don't marry. Are you with me? But you need to be able to see your life from the correct perspective. If not, the light that will be in your body will be what? Darkness. Will be darkness. So if we are not able to put you in a place and thoroughly understand who you represent your christianity is a lie may the lord give you understanding <laughs> welcome back from that video i know you are blessed in that video this is kingdom audio tv channel please do what to like our video subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so you'll be notified whenever we have a video like this don't forget to drop your comment drop your point of view i pray that the lord will help us in jesus name amen